Hey everybody, this is Erica, the technology nerd who likes to film stuff, and this is a what's on my smartphone style video. So I'm currently working on the Galaxy Note 8 review, and a lot of you guys have been asking, what do I put on my smartphones? How do I set my smartphone up? And I actually have a couple of interesting applications that I have specifically for the Galaxy Note 8. So I wanted to show you how I set my phone up, what are my most needed applications, and what I use to make Bixby go away entirely. And I like to have something more useful instead. So let's check it out. So let's explore what's on my phone. Let's go ahead and unlock it and we will see the home screen. Now the home screen is the most important part of the phone to me. It's the first thing that you see. And to me, I can't stress this enough. I really need simplicity with my smartphones. It needs to be laid out nice and simple where I know where everything is. And that's why I really like this L shape. I really don't like it when there are a bunch of icons all over the home screen. It's hard to find things, at least for me. And I also really like this because there's continuity between my MacBook and my phone. So I've got the dock icons and then also the side icons. And then, of course, conveniently, I make sure to have all of my most necessary apps that I use quite often right in this little L shape right here so I can easily reach them. I also like to make sure that my wallpaper stays completely unobstructed because my wallpaper is really important to me. It's that beautiful thing I get to look at every single day. I don't want icons all over it mucking it up. So everything that I have here is very, very simplistically laid out. Now, of course, the way that I have everything laid out is not achievable with every single launcher. And there is no exception with Samsung's TouchWiz Home, which is actually pretty nice, by the way. I do like how we can carousel to get to the applications, but there's a lot of wasted space here and I can't get these any tighter. So I end up using third party launchers. So I will use either the Nova launcher or Eevee. And what's really nice with the Nova Launcher is that it's so customizable. There's just so many things that you can do with it. And the EV Launcher has a lot of customizability as well, but just not as much. Really, the only reason that I use the EV Launcher over the Nova one is that you can actually use Samsung's themes and icons with it. They don't work well with the Nova Launcher for some reason. And I'm one of those people who likes to always change the look of my phone, depending on my mood. So that's important to me. But whether I have the Nova Launcher or the EV Launcher, it looks very, very similar. It's just with the EV One, you can't get rid of this stupid search bar. But with both of them, the icon layout is the same, and you can also back up the way that you have your home screen as well. So when I go over to another phone, it'll look the same. So quickly, I can show you how themes really work well with the EV Launcher. My favorite one is called Cookie Monster because it so much describes me. I am a cookie fiend. Let's go ahead and apply it. And you can see that we still have these pixel type icons. These are what I would use as my default. Really love pixel type icons, but you can hold down on the home screen here, go underneath settings, hit icon pack, and I just need to do a little bit of a refresh. So hit system, and there you go. You've got those cute little cookie icons as well. Same thing underneath your app drawer. So that's adorable. I wish it worked well with the Nova launcher, but it doesn't. So I just changed it to Nova and you can see that it, it just can't center the background no matter what I do. And I can't get those custom icons to apply either. Though I can still go to the Google Play Store and apply whatever third party icons are under there. You can see that those work very well. But I can't get the cookie ones to work. Now, as far as wallpapers go, if I'm not using the ones from Samsung, so if I'm just using any of my other phones, I like to go to interfacelift.com. Now, unfortunately, they are down right now. I don't know why, but I can get really beautiful images from interfacelift.com. So here we have the EV launcher. Let's set the home and the lock screen. I can change my Cookie Monster icons if I want to, but this just looks so pretty. That's beautiful. I just really hope that they're back up soon. Now, as far as my widgets, I'm really very simple. I just like to have my clock right where I can see it. Then I like to have my calendar and my Bible app. And then also I've got my pedometer for my steps and some other random things that I'm still working on. So I will offload them right here. Very, very simple. Then of course we've got shortcuts. Now these are really important to me. I really like shortcuts where I can use mappable buttons. So I'm going to get into how I did this a little bit later, but I've got double press. You can see I've got my flashlight. Go ahead and turn that off. And if I do a single press, it's going to pull up the Google Assistant. Then if I hold it down, it's going to pull me into Google Keep where I've got notes about this video. 
Then I always make sure that I've got my camera mapped to the power button, double click it. So for me, everything is about accessibility and simplicity. Now moving on to talking about my must-have apps, I wanted to take a second to thank my sponsors at TV Time for making content creation possible. And I'm really happy to include this app in the list of my must-have apps for Media Addicts. In one place, it allows me to track all of my shows, whether for TV or online streaming. And the biggest help for me is that it tells me where a show I am looking to watch is available, like on Netflix, Hulu, Amazon, iTunes, or on what channel it's available. So I always used to scramble online trying to find that info, but here it's in one place. It's one of those apps you don't really know that you needed until you find it. It tells me when new seasons are coming back and when to expect new episodes, and it also provides a countdown to help you remember. The For You tab provides specific content related to the shows you're watching, where you can take quizzes, listen to podcasts, and read articles. So what's nice is that while this app shows you info about your favorite shows and lets you track them, it's also a community. So after you're done watching an episode, you can interact with other fans, you can vote on your favorite characters, create video reactions, memes, GIFs. It's a really cool experience. And you can create a profile to share what you're watching with your friends. What I really love is that they tailor this app to not spoil any of your shows. The feeds can be unlocked as you progress, and overall, it's just helping me find what's out there and where to find it. So if you guys want to check out TV Time, it's a free app that you can download at the link in the description below. Check it out. Now moving on with my favorite and must-have applications, we've got BK Disabler and also the BK plugin that goes with that and BX Actions. I have the pro version, which is called Coffee. Now these apps are my heavy hitters. So with BK Disabler, this really lets me go and disable all kinds of bloatware. So just say you have a carrier version of a phone and you don't want all those things that you can't uninstall, you can disable them all right from here. And there are some apps that you can disable already, but this really lets you go in and do the nitty gritty. So you've got bloatware and system, and I really like going and disabling anything that I just don't care for. Now be careful because your phone might not work properly, but it's very easy to go and just activate them all again. So this is how I've been able to pretty much get rid of Bixby entirely. So let's look up Bixby. And you can see I have all these things disabled. We've got Bixby Global Action, Bixby Home, Bixby Services, yada yada. I had to keep Bixby Voice though, as that's what's letting this neat Bixby button function work. But because I've disabled all this, if I go underneath the camera, for example, if I hit Bixby Vision, nothing, nada. No more Bixby interruptions. Now, if you like Bixby, I'm not trying to knock it. It's just something that doesn't work for me. I've tried to give it a chance, and you know what? Maybe I will give it more of a chance for the full review. But for now, I'm really happy being able to use this as a utility for other things. So I also have BK Disabler on my Galaxy Note FE. It looks just like the Galaxy Note 7 by any other name. You know, it, it is a Galaxy Note 7 just the one that has the safe battery in it, and it's only available in Korea. And unfortunately, I have all this South Korea telecom nonsense on this. And out of the box, I was not able to use the default dialer for the phone, so that just was extremely annoying. So in comes BK Package Disabler. And you can see all this stuff that I disabled. So if I exit out of this and you go and you look at my phone right now, it looks completely normal, very, very clean able to use the just regular dialer. I even have my little theme applied to it. Very, very happy with this result. So one thing to mention about BK Disabler is that it's only available for Samsung phones. There are versions for LG and also just plain Android. Check those out underneath the Google Play Store, but this one's only going to work for Samsung devices. And then we've also got BX Actions, which is going to remap that Bixby button. And I'm extremely excited about this app. I'm just dreading that it says right here, Samsung may disable this app with a firmware update. I hope that's no time in the near future. I already realized that Samsung is making it possible to completely disable this button, but you can't remap it. So this is still very important. So the mode I have it running on is called control mode. It's going to completely turn off Bixby Home and it enables a couple of fun things like allows double press and long press, or you can use the blocking mode where you will have Bixby show up just momentarily and then it will execute whatever app you want on top of it. So this is much faster, but it does require you to plug it into the computer to get some permissions granted, but so, so fast. Then remap the button. 
So you can see I've got single press mapped to the Google Assistant, flashlight for the double press, and Google Keep for the long press. Really an excellent application. And you've got some extras down here at the bottom so you can control how long of a delay that you want to have these executed. So these are absolute must-have features for me. I couldn't be any more ecstatic. So let me know if you decide to use these and if they're helpful for you. So now that you've seen some of my really heavy hitters, what are some other apps that I really absolutely can't do without? So one of them would be SwiftKey. Now when I use a Samsung phone, I do end up using the Samsung keyboard so that I can use some of the pen features that work with it. But otherwise, SwiftKey is my absolute first choice. I love the theme options. I like that it learns my typing. It even goes so far as to tell me my Swift key stats. It tells me I'm most likely a professional or a techie. I'd say so. So you can use swipe methods or you can just type as you would like to. And you can easily resize the keyboard right from the keyboard itself, as well as messing around with your themes. So it's brilliant. I overall must have it, but because this is a note device, I'm going to be using the Samsung keyboard. As you can see, I can write, and it's going to recognize it and turn it to text for me. Plus, the adorable keyboard themes only work with Samsung's own keyboard. Then, of course, for my must-have social media apps, I mostly use Twitter. I'm always on it. I love interacting with you guys. And then I've got both Inbox and Gmail, and Inbox just really allows me to have some organization so I don't lose some mails. I can also snooze them for later. So this is great. I use Google Now all the time. I've also got YouTube Studio. This really helps me keep track of my YouTube channel. And I use a lot of Google services overall, like YouTube, Chrome. Google Maps is an absolute necessity. Google Photos. Google Photos is a huge one because I've got literally 4,000 pictures or more backed up on here since several years of reviewing phones. I also use Google Drive, so I'm an Android user. And of course, I can't do without Hulu, Netflix, Amazon Prime. I'm always using the Kindle app when I forget my Kindle. I'm a pretty big eBay user. There's always something that I'm keeping my eye on on eBay. Google Keep is also extremely necessary for me as I write a lot of my videos inside of Google Keep. And then of course, I've got Uber and my most favorite, Uber Eats. This saves my butt pretty much every single day. If I'm doing some studio stuff and I can't get out, this is really, really helpful. How else am I going to get my Mexican food so quickly? Now, as for games, I'm really not a big gamer on my phone. I'm a huge Nintendo fan. Obviously, here's Mario Run. So I really like to play games on my handheld consoles or on my Switch, but I do have Oceanhorn. You guys have probably seen me using this in a lot of different review videos. This is really akin to a Zelda type of a game, which is why I like it. This game has an absolutely beautiful music soundtrack, and also I am able to save my progress to the cloud, so if I go to a different device, that's okay, I can resume playing. So this game is absolutely highly recommended, and actually you can get it on the Switch right now too. And otherwise, I really love a game called Zen Koi. So essentially you get to grow your little guy here, you need to catch all these prey items, level up, and eventually you can turn him into a dragon. So you can see all my collection right here. And because I can back this up to the cloud, I'm able to play this game across all of my devices. So you can see as a theme for me, I need to have apps and games that I can easily back up so that when I go to a new device, it's there. Since I like starting up my devices from brand new, I don't want to restore all kinds of backups from who knows when. That's why I like having apps that are easily accessible with the cloud. I can install them individually, and I don't have to worry about any weird performance bugs. So you guys, please let me know what your heavy-hitting apps are. Let me know how you like to set up your phone. And let me know if you like my phone setup specifically. And make sure to check the link down in the description so that you can grab all the things that I have here. That is, if you're curious. So thank you guys so much for watching. This has been Erica, the technology nerd who likes to film stuff. Please rate, comment, and subscribe, and hit that notification bell for new videos that are upcoming. There's plenty of iPhone stuff that's upcoming in the near future, and I will have the full in-depth review of the Galaxy Note 8 out as soon as I can. So have a good night, you guys. Hope you learned something. Bye!